Hello, today I'm looking at this Wotobius 130 watt USB power adapter. This is by far the largest power adapter I've done on the channel so far. If you're new to the channel, there's a whole series on these power adapters where I test them for the power in and out while also comparing them to other offerings. There are billions of power adapters in use and this series will help you make an informed buying decision since not all devices are created equal. Let's open it up. So when we look at the box for this one, they tell you some of the various power outputs that it has and what it can do for the multiple ports. So we can see it can do 100 watts on one of these ports. It can do 30 watts on this third port or 30 watts on the USB-A port. You have a user manual. This gives you all those different possible conditions. You can see the model number there. You can see 1.8 amps, so we're assuming it has power factor correction, something to check. And this power adapter comes with something unique and that comes with this little extra lead here. You could convert this adapter into a desktop adapter. It has these leads that pop out, or you can do that. And now you have a uh, extension lead on your power adapter. And here's the actual power adapter. It's pretty sizable. You can see our three USB ports. They do label the power that this one can do and these two. The A we know is also a 30 watt port. And here's all the business. You can see our ETL for our safety listing over here. And over here we can see all the different modes and charging that it can do. And there's quite a few of them on this device because of the multiple ports that it has. The packaging weighs 47 grams. The power adapter weighs 217 grams. Exactly what it says in the manual. Also one of the heaviest power adapters I've seen so far. The extra power cable for the power adapter weighs 93 grams. So if you were to use these together, you're looking at 310 grams, easily the heaviest power adapter I've seen so far. Just for a quick comparison, this is the Bassius 120 watt power adapter, and this is the Watobius 130 watt power adapter. So it is a little bit smaller than the Bassius 120 watt power adapter. Obviously for comparison size to the Nano 2 65 watt, it's nowhere close. It's just a lot larger. So this, this is a big power adapter, but again, you're getting 130 watts across four different ports. So it's a little more capable than uh, some of the other offerings that are out there. Okay, let's go ahead and plug it in. So this one does not have any LED indication on it. All right, so I had to set up a little bit of a longer averaging time to get the to get everything to stabilize for this power adapter. And what we can see is the power consumption is a little high on the idle. It's not bad. It's better than some of the other ones we've seen in this higher power class, actually. It does have a little bit of fluctu fluctuation to it, so we can see that our peak current is a little on the high side right now for this idle state. All right, so I gave this time to settle down, and the idle power consumption seems to bounce around pretty good, so sometimes it passes and sometimes it doesn't pass the DOE 6 efficiency. And I'm pretty sure this adapter does not have the claim on here for the DOE 6 efficiency, so they aren't trying to say that it does meet it. And like right now, technically it is meeting it, but then there are other time periods where it doesn't meet it because it does draw a little bit more extra power sometimes. So we can see over here, we have our red LED, which means we have our five volts over here. And this red LED means that we have multiple modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the button and see what changes. So we have five volts, nine volts now, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, a 20 volt PPS mode, and then we're back to five volts. It covers most of the modes as listed by the PD 3.0 specification, so that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and check this 30 watt port down here and see what it offers. So we can see we have a red light, five volts, nine volts, 12 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, and an 11 volt PPS mode. So this 30 watt port down here is a little different in that it offers a PPS mode of 11 volts as opposed to the 20 volts you get out of these upper two ports. It looks like the USB-A port does support the 5, 9, 12, and 20 volt modes, so it can do everything it says. Uh, but what's weird about it is if we plug in this port over here, they reset. And now this one's only operating at 5 volts, and this one's thinking over here what it wants to do. All right, so now it, it overrode. So it looks like this USB port here, between these two 30 watt ports, you have to choose which USB port you use. So if you plug something into this USB-C port, you lose this USB-A port. Let's go ahead and check what happens when we share between our USB-C ports. Okay, so now I'm asking for more voltage on one of my USB-C ports. So I'm gonna set this one to, I don't know, we'll just use 20 volts. And we have a second port here, which is set to five right now. 
with the red LED. I'm going to go ahead and ask for a different voltage on this one. All right, so it looks like we can ask for that. So we got our blue LED, so it's asking for 20 volts on this port. We're asking for 20 volts on the second port. What happens when I unplug one of them? It resets. So it does have to, this is very similar behavior to what we've seen on previous devices, is that this does have to re-request that uh, the higher voltage again, which is fine. So a little bit of different behavior on this one, where the, uh, the bottom two ports are actually just shared with each other. Let's see if they reset when I plug in something. No. Okay. So again, it's that isolation we see on other devices. The two 100 watt ports kind of operate as one group, and then the two 30 watt ports operate as a second group. In this case, they are shared with each other. All right, let's go ahead and take the 100 watt port up to the overload condition. So we're operating at the full 100 watt load on the one USB port right now. So let's go ahead and increase this power level a little bit. So we're at 100 watts right now. Let's try 105, 106, and it's off. Wow, okay, that was quick. And it did recover to the five volts over here. So it looks like this device was capable of delivering uh, about 105 watts before it shut off. So it's it's not set too high. It's it's set in a pretty safe range. So yeah, it, uh, it behaves in a way that's very appropriate. I'm gonna grab another setup. We're gonna check and see if this device will deliver the 130 watts that it claims. We have 50 watts on our first USB-C port and we have 30 watts on the other USB-C port. That's the 30 watts is the max power this port will deliver. And so this one up here, we can take up to 100 watts and see if our overload happens and if our other port trips out. So I'm gonna take it right to 100 watts. Take it to that 105. I'm gonna go up to 106. So this board tripped out but my other power device stayed at 20 volts and is still delivering the 30 watts out of this cable and it did not reset at all. So those devices are independent of each other. So one of the next things to check is, is whether or not the power factor correction is in place for the various different modes. All right, so as of right now, I'm drawing about 15 watts on my external load. And what we can see is the power factor correction is in fact in place even on just this port right now. Okay, so I have it running at the full load right now. So we're drawing 130 watts out of this power adapter. And right now we can see that we're getting about 143 watts for the input side. Our power factor is very high. We have reasonable THD. Let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, graph for this unit. All right, and here we can see our graph of our voltage, which is the yellow, current, which is the red, and our power, which is the green. And right now, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Uh, you got a pretty nice clean sine wave going across. We have a good strong power factor. So overall, it's not bad. So just for completeness sake, I did want to show that the case of this unit is going to get a little bit on the hot side. This is running at the full 130 watt load and it's been running for about 10 minutes now. And we can see our case temperature is over 55 degrees C and our peak temperature you can see it's up over that 60 degrees C mark. It gets pretty warm on the case of this thing. It's just, uh, just a Fair warning. All right, for the overall data on this one, we can see that it's pretty good. That power factor correction turns on pretty early, so we get pretty strong numbers from 13 watts all the way up to 130 watts. The idle condition gets that PQS of about 53 because it has the low THD. The power factor is terrible, but that's expected from devices like this. The power consumption's not amazing, but it's certainly not the worst, especially for these larger devices. The efficiency of the device does suffer a little bit. It's a little lower than some of the other ones we've seen. It's not the top of the stack though. So when we look at the overall performance, we can see that it got a 161 out of 200 for its power quality score, meaning that it's not the best, but it is a reasonable power adapter. The price range for this one's about $90. So it's, it's certainly on the expensive side. The idle score again, not too bad. It doesn't meet that DOE six efficiency again. When we look at the graph for the idle, we can see that it's, you know, it's holding its own for the 100 plus watt class devices. When we look at it compared to the overall, we can see that it's moving up the stack. And you know, for being the largest device, consuming the most power, obviously, it has a pretty strong performance. And you know, it's nice to see that some of these larger power adapters can also cater to the lower power consumption devices. So if you wanna charge at 10 watts, this device has the power factor correction, but all the way up to 130 watts with multiple ports plugged in, it's also still doing that. So overall, this 130 watt Watobius power adapter, doesn't seem too bad. It has a ETL safety listing, so that's nice to see. 
it generally meets all the requirements. It handled 130 watts pretty pretty well. It did get warm. The case gets hot, but that's expected for such a small power adapter. You know, the major drawback is it still doesn't meet that DOE6 efficiency mark for you know the idle power consumption. And I mean, it's right on the cusp of doing that, but it just doesn't quite get there. Link will be down in the description if you want to get this one. Let's go ahead and mark our Watobius power adapter. Now I remember that it was been tested, so I don't test it again sometime. So I have a schedule on my website if you want to check out what videos are coming out in the future. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. All right.